Welcome to Panther Sports Talk Weekly. I'm Ryan Pierce, filling in for Rich Moser with head coach Kim Schutte of the softball team. Coach, uh, 4-0 this weekend, sweeps of Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech. You're now 12-0 at Williams Field. Can you explain that incredible success? Um, I guess you don't even think about it. That's how you explain that. Um, I didn't have any idea that had happened until I looked last night at some stats and I was looking at things and I think you guys mentioned something to me yesterday. But um, I think the, the minute that you look at stats and you focus on stats, something like that doesn't happen. And before you know it, uh, when you don't, you know, good things happen. So hopefully we can knock on wood, keep it rolling. So it's just uh, not really paying attention to the media and to the papers, just going out and playing it game by game? Yeah, we're, we're really trying to focus on us because uh, that's really the only thing we can control. And we're trying to stay in our bubble. And honestly, we love the media attention. It's awesome. It's great. Um, but at the same time, we're really trying to make sure that our 18 players and coaches and staff are all thinking the same direction. So a lot of times I discuss, hey, I want to make sure you guys know what I'm thinking so that you're thinking the same way I am so that we're not thinking about all the other stuff. We're thinking about one thing, and that's that ultimate goal. That a lot of players performed very well this season, but obviously the big name right now is Hannah Menica, <laughs> setting the record, the EIU record for single season strikeouts with 253 this past weekend. She was a number two starter last season. How do you explain the incredible improvement? Well, you know, um, Ninj had an awesome high school, high school career strikeout number. Mm -hmm. um, she did well at Heartland. Um, we kind of had a spot open up and she threw against us in the fall and I said, all right, what's it going to take to get you here in January? Then last last year, she was the number two to Midday, kind of helped her out when she could. At the end of the year, we have individual meetings in my office, one-on-one -on -one with player and coach. And at that time, she said, coach, I want to tell you, I think you have two number ones on this team. I think Midday and myself were both number ones and I'm going to show you. And that's the cool part about coaching. I mean, you know, when a kid, I didn't even bring it up, and the kid brought it up to me, and I don't know if she went home on the farm and threw against the silos all summer or what. You know, she had a little bit of injury last year. I know she hasn't made mention of that because she doesn't want any excuses, but a lot of it is confidence, and she's just going out there attacking the hitters. You brought up Stephanie Madej, who's your number two now. She was your number one last year. Really, they're, they're two number ones. Mm -hmm. How much of an advantage is that for EIU to have two stellar pitchers in the rotation? It's, it's awesome. I mean, not only are we good because our offense is good one through nine, but the fact that we throw one pitcher at them and they kind of go down and then we throw another one right back at them, that's an awesome combination. Um, and the relationship those two have, they're not really worried about one, two, two, one, innings pitch, strikeouts, whatever. They're kind of like their own little pitching coach in the dugout, which is really cool to see. You know, I'm the pitching coach, but yet between innings, they're talking to each other about this, that, and the other, and not about what they're going to have for dinner or about classes. They're talking about pitch counts and how to attack hitters, and um, they're good buddies on the field, good buddies off the field. So that's not always happens in sports. Um, but I think I'm, I'm very lucky, very fortunate to have two good number ones. You're very deep offensively, too, and your number three batter, Hannah Cole, has also shown great improvement from last year to this year, leading the OVC in a batting average right now. Uh, what's been her key to success this season? You know, uh, it's funny because it's kind of a similar story. Um, coach Jay is our hitting coach, and he said, you know, Tiggs, uh, you got to find a way on the field, and you have to fix this about your swing to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to like what happens next year. And she kind of talked to him throughout the summer occasionally, and she went with dad in the backyard and went after it. And she's come back a different kid. You know, I bet and throughout the conference, people are like, who is this Cole person? Where was she last year? And, and that's the cool thing is when someone decides they want to do something, that's, that's the neat part. You know, it's one thing when your coaches tell you to do something and they're hammering you, but when kids decide, coach, I'm going to show you, or I'm going to do this, or I want this, and they go get it, that's kind of like you step back and just watch. It sounds like a lot of the players in your team have a good personal drive. Do you think that comes from the great team atmosphere you have, your coaching, their own personal attitude? What is it? It's not my coaching. <laughs> no, I'm sure I, uh, that has something to do with it, though. I mean, I think we have a good a good group. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm very lucky to have good assistant coaches. Um, I think we have built this program and built a reputation and more so built a tradition of taking care of each other. You know, when you come into Panther softball, you're part of something much bigger than yourself. Um, you're part of a little family that really supports each other constantly and 
um, takes care of each other. And I think that's built on tradition. So whatever it is, I hope it keeps going. <laughs> you have a deep lineup. You can pitch. You're going towards the end of the season now. Is there any one or two areas you want to tighten up and improve a little bit before the playoffs? Um, you know, we still have two weeks, and we can't stay here. We have to keep going. Um, we have bigger goals than just one game or this game or this opponent or that opponent. Um, and everyone's going after us, which we like. I love the target on our back. Um, but we have to keep improving and keep taking our game to the next level, just like other people are as well. So to answer your question, keep things rolling, but you know, keep that one through nine, not, not the big names. I mean, everybody loves the big names right now, the Cole, the Willard, the Menega, the Madej, but keep the one through nine and the nine through 18 helping. You know, this weekend, Markowski stepped up, Beck stepped up, Steflak stepped up. Those are some of the names that don't get a ton of praise, but man, they helped us win those ball games this weekend. The Panthers are one and one half games out uh, in, in first place in the Western Division of the OVC. Are you keeping an eye on SIU Edwardsville and UT Martin? <laughs> Obviously, you play them both in the uh, upcoming weeks. I'd lie if I said I didn't keep an eye on them, but at the same time, I'm trying not to look. Mm. I mean, everybody else around is keeping an eye out for me. So um, that makes it, makes it exciting. But again, like we talked about at the beginning, we can control ourselves and we're just looking for each other and to work hard and practice and see what happens. Just a few more for you, Coach. You have UT Martin coming up on the road. That'll be tough. And then to start off the month of uh, May, you have SNU Edwardsville at home. Can you talk to me a little bit about those two teams and what you know about them? Um, UT Martin's a tough place to play. Uh, we've played the conference tournament there within the last three years. They've been, you know, one or two the last couple of years. They're, they play a tough, hard-nosed game. And uh, it's always a battle. So. We're looking forward to that. Anytime you get to throw the ball up and see what happens, it's fun time on the field. And then that school that's just down the road from us, that's right behind us, we'll worry about them later. <laughs> Coach, anything else you want to add about the year, the playoffs coming up, a few of your players that we didn't talk about? Oh, it's it's just a, it's a fun time to be around softball right now. You know, we have great fan support. Maybe that contributes to that 12-0 thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the fans, the atmosphere here, it's a tough place to play at Glenn Williams Field, and we hope that tradition continues. So. Um, our girls are a pretty good group. They're pretty okay, not just athletically, but they're a pretty good group off the field as well. Coach, thanks a lot. Uh, best of luck the rest of the year. Thank you. Head Coach Kim Schutte on Panther Sports Talk Weekly. Stick with us. More is coming up right after this. WEIU is your home for Eastern Illinois Panther sports, Panther football. Right around the right end on a reverse, throws a pass, and it is caught. The Panthers win. Flora, of all people, throws the win. Panther basketball. Six and shoot. Out to Piper. Long three. Panther blade. Panther greats. WEIU is your home for Panther sports. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther athletics. Baseball with the series win at Coaches Stadium over Southeast Missouri State, two games to one. EIU is now 14 and 22 overall and 5 and 12 in the OVC. Softball remains in first place in the OVC at 19 and 2. They had series sweeps over the weekend at Williams Field over Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech. Track was in Normal, Illinois at the Illinois State Spring Classic. 11 Panthers posted first place finishes as the men won their meet and the women placed third overall. Women's tennis wrapped up their 2013 season as they lost on day two in the OVC Tennis Championships. They won their first round match over Austin P 4 to nothing and then fell to top seed Eastern Kentucky 4 to nothing. EIU finishes the season 13 and six overall and seven and three in the OVC. Men's golf was at the Tennessee State Tournament. They placed 14th overall and the top Panther finisher was Kevin Flack. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Wednesday, prior to the airing of this show, Panther baseball at Coaches Stadium at 12 o'clock against Benedictine University. And Panther softball is in Indianapolis for a doubleheader with IUPUI starting at 3 o'clock. For results and stats of those games, check out EIUPanthers.com. On Thursday, men's golf begins competition at the OVC Golf Championships in Dixon, Tennessee. On Friday, men's golf with day two at the OVC Golf Championships. Track is at the Drake Relays in Des Moines, Iowa and baseball begins a three-game series at Belmont. On Saturday, men's golf wraps up competition at the OVC Golf Championships, track with day two at the Drake Relays, softball with a doubleheader at UT Martin starting at one o'clock, baseball with game two of their three-game series at Belmont starting at two o'clock, 
On Sunday, softball wraps up their three-game series at UT Martin, and baseball wraps up their three-game series at Belmont. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Carbassoon. Game on the line, two-point conversion. They throw it to Laura, running around the right end on a reverse, throws a pass, and it is caught. The Panthers win. WEIU is your home for Eastern Illinois Panther football. Eric Laura and Jimmy Garoppolo lead the Panthers' potent offense in 2013 as EIU looks to repeat as OBC champs. It's Eastern Illinois Panther football coming in September on WEIU. OBC, 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 OBC. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk Weekly. I'm Ryan Pierce with baseball head coach Jimmy Schmitz. Coach, coming off a good weekend, won two out of three against SEMO. Your four and a half games out of the final playoff spot in the OVC. Talk a little bit about, about the win this weekend and how big it was for your team. Well, I thought after, you know, Saturday's loss, uh, kind of a big loss, we just said it's, we're kind of in the playoff hunt. It's, it's, we got it. We just got to win every game. I know that's a lot of pressure, but uh, you just have to go out with a little bit of fun or, and you do well. And if you go with the, uh, feeling like there's a lot of pressure you probably won't play well so Matt Bournes was really the show this weekend um, complete game um, so really excited how we respond to a team SEMO who went to Austin P and took two out of three the weekend before so um, you know we hopefully we can be more consistent on the weekend and come away with uh, these kind of uh, victories yeah let's start with Matt led your team to that 13-3 win on Sunday uh, he's really pitched well lately a guy that you recruited knowing you had a ton of potential he's come along a couple of Good starts in a row. Talk about how he's played so far over the past couple of weeks. Well, I, I think he's a perfect example of a, a guy in high school that, again, has potential, a real tall right-handed pitcher that with a lot of velo. Uh, coach Anderson, the pitching coach, has done a great job with him. Um, we, you know, we put him into that first slot, the Friday night slot, which is a lot of pressure, and he handled it well. Didn't get the good results that maybe we wanted out of him, so we moved him to another slot, take a little bit of the pressure away. but. Um, I, I think he's going to be one of the better arms that we've had here. Uh, yesterday, his last pitch was actually 90 in the ninth, so he, he's starting to show what he, the potential we really thought he had. Another pitcher, Jake Johansmeyer, on Friday getting his first OVC start, and he performed really well as, as well. J Jake's been unbelievable. He was a little injured in the fall, so we really didn't see some things. Um, you know, Jason loves him. He's been our closer. Uh, he'll be midweek starter to get us through the a couple games with our thin pitching staff and then all of a sudden telling him you know maybe the biggest I think every weekend we're going to say the biggest weekend of the year because we do have to win two out of three and, and he went out bases loaded first inning and got through with just one run and then settled down so um, Jake just shows uh, some of these freshmen coming in they have a little composure and he really has that and that's kind of his main strength. You do have a lot of young players on this team and the team's shown a lot of progression throughout the year how important has that been to see that improvement and continuous progression as the year's gone along? Well, it, it's real important. I mean, obviously, we're sitting down as a staff and evaluating for next year, and we make decisions, you know, weekly if we think this guy's going to move on and, and be our starting left fielder or catcher the next year. So um, to have a program and to get this thing going back in the right direction, you have to have development. And we've had a, a lot of young guys doing really well, not only in the pitching staff, but uh, obviously in, in the offense. Uh, looking at the middle of your, your lineup, uh, Trayson Vavra and, and Brent Volick have both been big run producers this year, have massively high slugging percentages. Uh, it seems like they've really stepped up and been a big rock in the middle of that order. Yes, they have. I mean, Trey was the guy with, with Ryan Deneen last year signing late in the summer. Um, we were really lucky to go out and get him from a junior college. And, uh, you know, he's been kind of our most consistent guy week in and week out. Uh, Brandt's been hot and cold, but finally showed some real slugging this weekend uh, versus SEMO. So, uh, fortunate to have those two guys this year and also next year. And Caleb Powell, of course, at the top of the order, batting around 320, 330. He's really been impressive. He, he just did it last year, and he's doing it again this year. Um, you know, Caleb, we moved him to different slots in the lineup. That was probably not a good decision. Uh, he likes being as a leadoff guy, taking a lot of pitches. His on-base percentage is really, I think, the plus that he has. So. Uh, really fortunate with what he can do for our lineup. You're going towards a stretch run now. You need every win you can get if you want to make that uh, final playoff spot. How do you keep your team's focus and composure over these final couple weeks? Well, that's the hard thing. Um, we talked about it, like I said, Saturday night. Um, you know, you, you try not to make too much out of it, but it, it's pretty much the writings on the wall. Uh, we go to Belmont, mm -hmm. uh, who you know, is one of the top teams in our league. Uh, we've not played well on the road, so 
uh, if you don't address it, then I think you're just missing the point. You got to address it, and uh, you know I think aggressive. We were real aggressive on Sunday. I did a couple bunt plays, did some steals, tried to do some things. So uh, we're just going to try to put more pressure on them offensively, and I think that'll that'll be the key if we're able to win. You brought up your road well. You guys have been great at home especially in conference play, but the road, it's almost been the complete opposite. You think that's typical, or maybe you guys are a little bit more extreme than teams pass? Well, I, I think it's typical of, uh, other than OVC. I, I mean, in the OVC, I don't think we really have had the struggles that we've had this year. Um, you know, we won't go into all that other than we're going to Belmont. You know, they're a really good baseball team. Um, hopefully we can go after them Friday night the way we went after SEMO this Sunday. Yeah, they have the best team ERA in the OVC. Uh, what do they do so well pitching? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm really working on Illinois. We play gotcha, them tomorrow gotcha, night. Yeah. Um, we kind of deal with the opposing team on Thursday. Um, I know they have a really top left-handed pitcher uh, who's really the top leader in the OVC. So, um, you know, we kind of deal with it early in the week who we're playing, and then Belmont will sit down and go over them on Thursday. Anything else you want to add about the season this year, Coach, your upcoming games or some of the players we didn't talk about? Well, I, you know, again, it's been a hard year uh, with some injuries, but I'm really proud of how the guys have responded, uh, even in our really tough road losses at Tech and J-State. Um, you know, I told the team we have 12 losses uh, for three with three runs or less, so, um, you know, you can say that's a sign of a team that's not very good or we're that close to really kind of putting this thing together, and we tend to think the later. Coach, thanks a lot for stopping by, and good luck the rest of the year. Thanks, Ryan. At Coach Jimmy Schmitz, stick with us when we come back. A feature on Brent Volek, a great player for the EIU baseball team. This is Panther Sports Talk Weekly on WEIU. Even though he's only a sophomore, Eastern Illinois third baseman Brant Volek has already earned a spot in the starting lineup, and assistant coach Ben Walgamot says that while he's not the most vocal leader, Volek lets his play do the talking. You know, you know what you're going to get from him every single day. I mean, he, he's a worker. Um, he doesn't say much. He, he, he kind of leads by example, um, not, by, not by words where he's going to make the play. Um, he wants to be up in, in that pressure situation where you know, some some other guys may not may not want to be there. Where where Brant, you you know what you're getting every single time. Third baseman number 33, Brant Volick. And we have we have five leaders on our team, uh, basically captains, and Brant is one of those. And, and each guy leads a little bit differently. And and Brant, he, he's one of the guys. He leads by example. And he's not getting on guys, but he knows how to he knows how to talk to his teammates um, individually. And, and but most for for the most part, it's all you know lead by example, plays hard every play. Volek has been noted for his glove work in his first two seasons, with head coach Jim Schmitz calling him the best defensive third baseman in Schmitz's nearly 20 years at EIU. Well, with, with the improvement, we, we've talked about his lateral quickness, his first step. You know, it, it, it can get better, but as a young guy, um, you know, his ceiling is so high. And Coach Schmitz has done this a lot longer than I have, and, and he's had some good third basemen. And, and to say that about Brant is you know, it's a high regard uh, to Brant. And for me, coaching for three or four years, he's the type of guy in my 20th year, I look back and say, you know, Brant Volek was, was the best third baseman defensively I've ever coached. You know, I, I really I really try to lock it in 100% of the time. Uh, you know, any, any play, I, I really believe in myself that I can make any play on the field. You know, defense, defense is a huge, uh, you know, you, you gotta be really confident in yourself to make great plays and you know if you, if you think you can make a great play then you, then you will and if you don't you won't. Well you know Brant came in as a freshman and, and as a freshman you never know what what to expect and he came in and, and took third base over um, was our was our guy from day one and, and throughout his freshman and sophomore year so far is is nothing but but great things he's done defensively and offensively. Volek came in his freshman year and supplanted established third baseman Ryan Deneen, who is currently playing minor league baseball after being drafted by the Houston Astros. Yeah, with moving Deneen to short and having Brant come in as a freshman and, and, like I said, taking over the position, you know, that made our team so much better. Brant is as sure as it gets at third. 
um, making routine plays and great plays, and that allowed our defense to get better with with the move to the mean to short. Uh, I, I had a really good relationship with Ryan, and I, I learned a lot from him. You know, obviously him being a junior and a really good ball player, you, you know what you want, you always want to pick his ear and you know see what he has to offer. And I really learned a lot, and I think he made me a better baseball player. As for what makes Volek such a good defensive third baseman, Coach Walgamot says it's his ability to make the routine plays that sets him apart at the hot corner. Well, I think the biggest thing with Brand is he makes the routine play, and, and it, it's tough to find a guy who's who's consistently going to make the routine play. Every now and then, you know, he'll make a great play, the bare hand play, which he's unbelievable at. But you know, if the ball's hit to third, you can almost look away because you know the play is going to be made every time. While his defense has been outstanding again this season, Volek's offensive production has been up with 25 RBIs through play on Sunday, good for second on the team. And he says hitting in the cleanup spot is just fine with him. Yeah, I mean, from, from last year to this year, my, my role definitely changed. Last year, I more more just filled a spot in the lineup, and I was pretty much in there to play defense. And, not, you know, now this year, Coach wanted my role to change, start hitting some balls harder, more doubles, more homers, and really drive in runs and be a, be a force in the middle of the lineup. And with those two guys, you know, your three, four guys, you want them to be your high RBI guys. And, and Brant's been able to do that for us this year. And, and last year he played a role of being in the six or seven hole and, and he was on base all the time and hit for a high, a high average for the whole year and then especially in conference play where you know he was a go-to guy in our lineup where in the bottom of the lineup he was driving in runs. Yeah, I mean, we, we did lose a lot of big bats. We lost a lot of home runs and, you know, Toma, Deneen, McManus. But uh, this, this year's definitely a different team. You know, we have a lot of new guys. And, uh, you know, yeah, we lost we lost a lot of home runs, but we have a lot, you know, a lot more hitters with average this year, and I, I think we can definitely use that to our benefit. You know, like you said, the, the season is far from over, and we have plenty of time to turn it around, and I, I think we will. Volek is one of five captains on this year's Eastern team, and Coach Walgamont says Volek has been the kind of player any team would like to have. You know, he, he's just like I said, he, he's he's the guy you want on your team um, defensively. You know, okay, you, you know that ball hit the third he, he's gonna make the play and and that helps us uh, tremendously um, making big plays and the routine play you know I think I think it speaks a lot about myself is as a ball player you know I I do come to practice every day and work hard and I show up early and I leave late and I, you know, I I wanted to uh, especially this year really uh, you know really really be a captain really be a leader on this team because I, I knew I had the ability to you know, especially after how I did last year, I knew I knew that I could help out our team being a leader this year. The Panthers are currently in a dogfight for a spot in the OVC tournament with a 5-12 and record in conference games through Sunday, but Volek says the team is taking things one game at a time. You know, I, I, I got to focus one game at a time, you know, one at bat at a time, and I don't want to think too far down the road and take my focus off of what we have right now. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Cupia. We wrap up this week's edition of Panther Sports Talk with highlights from this past weekend's EIU baseball and softball games at Coaches Stadium in Williams Field, 